All right, so today we're talking about a topic I call too much torque, which is basically why you might want to not make as much torque as you possibly can when you tune your engine. So all machines have safety margins, airplanes, buildings, as well as cars. And this is important because obviously if you hit a big uh, pocket of turbulence in the air, you don't want the wings ripping off your airplane, everybody falling to the ground and dies. So they make the wings stronger than they need to be to make it so they can sustain steep turns and severe turbulence. Buildings have extra structural integrity to them, so if there's a lot of snow on top of the roof or too many people in the building, the building doesn't collapse. Cars are no exception. We have to build a safety margin in so we can drive the car for 150,000 miles and have durability with the car. This is an advantage for us as an aftermarket tuner because the car companies actually put too much safety margin in the car in order to reduce their warranty exposure. So they actually provide a safety margin of literally around a 50% increase before the parts will fail. This ensures that their warranty claims are very low because the car is very understressed. Now they can't put an unlimited safety margin in. We can't make the safety margin 100% or 200% because the safety margin comes with extra weight. We have to make the material thicker or stronger or more expensive. And this makes the car heavier and it performs worse. So we want just as much safety margin as we can get no more than we need. In the race car business, we like to make a car so that when the race is over, the car is worn out. It just barely makes it to the end. That makes the race car as light as possible, gives us a maximum performance, but we still have to make it to the end of the race. Okay, so torque is what actually causes things to break in the drivetrain. It's the twisting force. We can measure with a torque wrench in pound feet, or you use meters. But basically, it's the amount of force that's twisting. Horsepower is a mathematical calculation, which is torque times RPM divided by 5252. It's a unit of work that can be accomplished. The torque is actually the twisting force. And that's what will twist parts and break parts and cause the car to fail. So the best way to tune a car is with as much torque as we possibly can produce without any durability issues in the car. And then hold that torque as long as possible. We're gonna get that a little bit farther down in this conversation. Okay, so this is a dyno graph for the new G80 M3, M4. This is the carbon torque curve. This is the carbon horsepower curve in green, and in red is the BMW torque curve and the BMW horsepower curve. Now, as you can see, both us and BMW are trying to make the torque as flat as possible. What we want to do is get to a torque limit that will either break the car or limit of traction can handle in the car going forward. We want to hold that as long as possible. And you say, why does it drop off like this? The problem is an engine is sized, the size of the ports, the size of the valves, the camshaft lift and duration is sized for one specific RPM. It's a mechanical machine. And we can't make the right size for all RPMs and all loads without physically changing the size of the ports as the engine revs, which is not practical with the modern technology that we have today. It has to be like the iris in your eye where it can change size. It also needs to change length at the same time. So what the car companies have done to compensate for this is they have variable cam timing and variable valve lift. In the old days, when I was young, the torque curve used to just be a bump. It looked like a mountain. And because we have variable cam timing, a variable valve lift, variable ignition timing, variable turbo boost, all the things we have in a modern engine that makes it tunable, we can make the torque curve stay flat for a very long period of time and have a lot of torque at very low RPM, which makes modern cars perform so well compared to older cars. The problem is at some point, the port's too small, the valve's too small, we have too much back pressure uh, in the turbocharger, and at some point, the torque falls off. And since horsepower is a calculation of torque times RPM, since the torque goes down, the multiplier goes down, and the horsepower just stops going up. What we'd like to do is we'd like to make this stay the whole way if we possibly could, and make this stay the whole way. Not possible to do. Okay, so this is our ideal torque and horsepower curve. The blue line is torque, the rust colored line is horsepower. And as you can see, if RPM doubles, 4,000, 8,000, our Horsepower exactly doubles from 457 to 914. That's because horsepower is torque times RPM divided by 5252. When we double the RPM, we double the horsepower output. If we could build an engine to do this, this is what we're trying to achieve. Unfortunately, as I showed you in the last graph, we could do this for a while. And at some point, the engine runs out of the ability to breathe, as we call it in the car business, and the, and the torque falls off and the horsepower stops going up. But the goal here is, if the car will handle 600 pound-feet of torque from a traction standpoint, and the powertrain components themselves will handle 600 pound-feet of torque without braking, we want to hold it at 600 pound-feet of torque for the entire rev band. This will give us the maximum acceleration because we're at the traction limit throughout the entire rev band. 
Uh, the car companies know this, which is why a lot of the modern turbo high-performance cars are tuned this way. So for example, if you look at the GT2 RS Porsche, okay, it only has 500, 550 pound-feet of torque and 750 horsepower. Okay. So what they've done is they it's a two-wheel drive car. They've reduced the torque to what they think the traction of the tire is and or what they think the durability of the drivetrain is. And then they try and hold that torque as long as possible by adding more and more boost as the RPM goes up to keep the horsepower from falling off. It's not exactly this nice of a curve, but that's what they're trying to achieve. The new Ferrari 488 is the same way many of these supercars are. The aftermarket, for some reason, has a tendency just to make whatever torque they can make. And usually they have a power graph where the torque has a huge bump in it. Okay, and then it falls off really bad at high RPM. This causes a couple of problems. Okay, one is the twisting action of the increased torque will break the entire drivetrain engine, gearbox, clutch, drive shafts, differential, even the mounts in the unibody can be ripped out or even the rubber mounts can be damaged by the differential mounts. Uh, so this causes the car to be very undurable. The other problem is, is that you have a traction limit. Even if you have an all-wheel drive car, you have a traction limit and it sees a traction limit and the car breaks traction and then it stops its forward momentum and then it gets over this big torque spike and then it gains power. And then the car feels like it kind of slows down because the torque falls off so fast. Not a very nice feeling power curve as well. So what we do at Carbon is we attempt to emulate what the OEMs do, but instead of making 550 pounds of torque, we try and make it six or seven or even eight, whatever we think that the car can handle safely. But we, want, we don't want a big bump in the torque curve. We want the torque curve to be linear as long as we possibly can. The other problem is, is that when you wind up running a lot of torque, you wind up having a lot of cylinder pressure, and this causes a very high EGT, which might damage the turbocharger or the parts downstream in the exhaust as well as it requires you to retard the timing lot to prevent super knocking and causing damage to the engine. So you're better off in a whole bunch of reasons to reduce the torque a little bit, okay, and to work on the top end of the power curve instead to keep whatever torque is practical for as long as possible. Thanks for watching. We're gonna do these every week and cover different topics so you can learn how to modify a car safely. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and join us on social media at Carbon Official.